In this video, we will take a look on server and client components in Next.js 13. I'll right away at the beginning show briefly the documentation of them and point out a few things from there. But if you have already read that and just want to see the coding part, then you can jump ahead. I'll leave chapter markers down below. But let's get started. So here is the documentation for server and client components. And probably the number one thing that you need to know is set right here. So by default, all components inside the new app directory are React server components. So this allows us to automatically adopt the server components with no extra work. And some of the benefits of using server components are set right here. So we can better leverage the server infrastructure, for example, large dependencies that previously would impact the JavaScript bundle size that is sent to the uh, client side remains now entirely on the server. So the amount of JavaScript sent to the client is reduced, which is good. However, we can't work entirely without JavaScript. So the app directory still needs some JavaScript. And when a route is loaded, the Next.js and React runtimes will be loaded. And those are cacheable and predictable in size. And this runtime does not increase in size as our application grows. And whenever we need some additional JavaScript on the client side, for example, some click events or that kind of stuff, then we would need to use the client components. So the server components are completely rendered on the server. And then the client components are, surprise, surprise, rendered on the client. And with Next.js, the client components can also be pre-rendered on the server and then hydrated on the client. If pre-rendering and hydration are something that you are new to, no worries, I have a video explaining both of those. So I'll leave a link for that in the description and you can check it out. So basically all of our components inside of the app directory are rendered as server components. Unless we add a keyword use client on top of the component code. So we can use client components by adding this use client statement at the top of the component file. And that's all we need to do in order to render a component as a client component. So when should we then use server components and when client components? Well, first of all, if you are trying to use some features or APIs that are only usable in client components, Next.js will throw an error. So that's one way to know it. But right here, we have a nice table explaining some of the things that you should do with server and client components. So with server components, whenever you are fetching data, you should use server components. There are exceptions. You can also fetch data with client components if you really need to, but it's recommended to fetch the data in the server component. Then of course, if we access some backend resources or if we have some sensitive information, for example, tokens or API keys, those should be uh, kept in server components. And then also uh, it's recommended to keep large dependencies on the server, which reduce the client side JavaScript. On the other hand, if we want to add some interactivity, for example, with click handlers or on change handlers, or if we want to use state or lifecycle effects or browser only APIs, or some custom hooks that, that depend on state effects or browser only APIs, uh, then we should use the client components. And also if you are using React class components, then you need to use the client components also. But I think that's enough for us to get started with the client and server components, and we can jump into the VS code. So let's create a simple application that demonstrates the difference between server components and client components. And I have here a fresh Next.js application using Next.js Next 13 open. And what I'm gonna do first is get rid of the pages folder and create a new folder app. And inside of that, I'll create page.js. And over here, I will export a function like this and save it. And then let's fire up our dev server And we need to add the experimental app dear true statement to the next.js config. So let's do that like this. 
and then try to run our dev server again and switch to the browser and see how it looks. Okay, we get the hello text, so everything is good. Now let's hop into the page.js. Let me make this a little bit smaller, like this. So let's create an application that fetches blog posts from an API and then just shows them in a list. And I should say that for this, we are just going to use a dummy JSON API to get the posts and then display them. So let's get started by actually adding a heading over here. And then I will add a posts component right here that will handle the data fetching and displaying the blog posts. And since we don't yet have this, I will import it over here like this and then create that component. So new file posts.js. And then I will export a function from here like this and let's save it and see that it works looking good. Next, let's fetch the data. So up here, I will define a function that fetches the data like this. So we are just going to fetch the posts from this uh, placeholder API. So if we navigate to this URL with the browser, uh, we can see it returns a bunch of blog posts as a JSON. So next, let's call that function inside of the posts component and then render the posts like this. So we are calling the function over here, getting the posts and then mapping through them and just rendering the title. So let's switch to the browser and see how it looks. So it looks like we are getting a bunch of these titles from the API. So let's say we wanted to show the title and the body of a blog post. And let's actually create a new component called post that will display those. So I will create a new file over here called post.js and then export a function from here that displays that data. Like this, so we are getting the title body and ID as a data prop and then just displaying the title and body over here. So let's go to the posts.js and import that component like this and then use it instead of the div. Like this. Let's save it and see if it works. Looks like it, so we get the title over here and then the body over here. And we have a bunch of blog posts, so that's great. So at this point, I just want to point out that this post component right now is a server component. And actually all of these components we have are server components. And that's because they are in the app folder and they are not using the use client statement. So the post component is also a server component and this data fetching that we do over here is done on the server and then the client just gets this component with the data already rendered. So no data fetching to this JSON placeholder API is done in the client side and we can actually test this. So we have the network tab open over here. So I will clear that and we can actually also change to the fetch tab. And now if we refresh the page, we can see that no fetch request was made to that JSON placeholder API. So all that is done in the server. But how about if we wanted to add a like button over here for each of these posts? So let's take a look how to do that. So first of all, I will create a new component for that. So new file and like button, and then just export a function from it like this. And then let's use it in the post component. So let's import that like this and then let's render it under the body like so. Now let's save this and switch to the browser. I will refresh the page and looks like it's loading quite a bit. This actually happened to me a couple of times. I'm not sure what this is about, but what helps here is just to close the server and then boot it up again. I don't know if this is something to do with the app uh, still being in beta or something like that. I don't know, but that, ac that at least helped last time and what do you know, it helps now. So yeah, uh, we have the like button over here now. So right now the like button is a server component, but let's actually make our like button a real button and add some functionality to it. So let me just make a couple of modifications. 
like this. So I added a button with on-click handler just throwing an alert saying that you like this. So let's save it and go to the browser. And right now we can see that we have an error over here saying that event handlers cannot be passed to client component props. So what this means is that in order for us to use this uh, click handler, we need to convert this like button to a client component. And how we can do that? Well, all we have to do is add that use client statement up here like this. Let's save it and go to the browser. And now we have a like button over here and no error anymore. And if we click the like button, we get the alert saying that you like this, like this. So as we read in the docs, if we want to add some on-chain stuff, we need to use a client component. And also if we wanted to use some use state or use effect hooks, for example, then we would also need to use a client component. So let's say we wanted to change the button text based on user clicking on it. So for that, we would need use state. So let me add some code over here and let's go through it together. So like this, first I imported the use state from React and then added is liked state for the component. And then when the user clicks the button, it toggles the is liked variable. And based on that, it will display either unlike or like. So let's save it and check the browser. So now we have the like button over here. And if we click it, it will change the text to unlike. So using the use state also requires us to use client component. So this component over here uses client components. So it's rendered on the client side. Whereas the post component over here is rendered on the server side. So this title and body are already rendered in the server and then this component is sent to the client. But the like button itself is rendered in the client side because we use the use client statement at the top of the file. Hopefully this clears things up for you regarding the client and server components. I know this is just a short, simple example, but I still felt that I should make this video just explaining the basics. To learn more about the features in Nexus 13, check out these videos over here. And if you are not already, please do hit the subscribe button below. I would highly appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.